some yeah. something. Oh, okay. You know, no, I I take I take credit for being for being the matchmaker. We're um, we're at our neighbor's Persian New Year party, and joined a table with our neighbors Phil and Karen, and we sat down, and they um, they had their daughter with them. It was there that Joan said. I have a son, he'll be really nice, you know, for those two to be friends and and get along, they'll get along so well. And can I can I take a picture of her? Now at the same time, I'm on my phone with, with my son, Peter, who's in Milwaukee, and he's having a very um, difficult uh, time with his packing up and moving to Guam. A lot of kind of drama going on. So I'm getting worried about him and, and a little upset. Now we're talking with um, Phil and Karen and meeting her, her daughter Momo, who's, of course, when she's just so beautiful, you can't help but be struck by her beauty. But what really touched me was her, her inner beauty. She's just so, so kind and so warm. Her eyes were so, um, so warm and loving. So as we're talking, it became really clear that Peter and Momo both had some parallel stories going on. Peter and I first met on the Blood Moon Eclipse, or the Red Moon Eclipse, and it was March 23rd, 2015. And um, I was actually supposed to be visiting um, Guam for Christmas, and I just never left. I was supposed to be visiting for about two weeks, and I had brought my fiance from Wisconsin at the time, because I was living there in Madison. We both were with the wrong people who, funny enough, they seemed like the same person um, and she was in Wisconsin I was in New York at the time and I flew back to Wisconsin to pack up my things with the person I was with at that time with the intention of going back home um, and well basically it blew up to a point where I just had to leave I just I wasn't having any more I ended things and I came back here with the intention of only being here for a few weeks. Funny enough, Momo was here at that exact same time. The day before the moon eclipse, um, my fiance and I called it off. Um, and I was like crying and I was eating Easter eggs because Easter was coming up. So I was just eating eggs. And, um, and my mom called me out and she was like, Momo, why don't you come and look at the moon? and the moon is huge and it's beautiful. It's supposed to be a red moon. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I don't wanna, I don't, I don't feel like it, I don't feel like doing anything. She's like, no, just come out and look at the moon. And then I remember seeing my dog, Ralphie, running up to me and he was walking with um, these two guys and I didn't know who they were and with some other dogs. Um, and, and then my mom introduced me and it was Peter and his dad. So Peter and I said, oh, hi, um, this is Peter, and then this is Le Momi, and then it went dead silent, and the two kids, Peter and both Le Momi, they started talking and talking, their eyes connected, it felt like their souls connected, it was so, so beautiful. So Peter and I looked at each other like, okay, um, see you later. <laughs> And like the whole neighborhood, like driving by, trying to catch us. So really, it, it, what was supposed to be our, our, our moment, everybody on the hill freaking got involved. So Momo and Peter are talking in between their houses, again, equidistant. The moon is out, it's starting to eclipse. And I think they're marrying other people, but I'm a jerk. And I'm trying to egg them on to kiss each other because it was so romantic and I thought they were looking at each other kind of weird, but I, I was teasing them that they should kiss each other because it's so romantic. If there's a red moon, it's eclipsing. How often does that happen? We, we talked for hours and hours until the eclipse. And, um, and I just remember thinking the entire time that we were talking, like, I feel like I know this guy. I feel like, I feel like we've met before and um, and it felt like we were just, you know, picking up where we left off. She started laughing and her heart opened up to give and receive love. So that was, it was such a miracle that um, these two kids who met on Mount Tenjo, 
shared the love of the land, the wind, and the, the clouds, and, and the uhi vice. So it's so, it's so beautiful. I genuinely felt like I had known her forever. Like, it feels ancient, it feels, it feels old, it feels, it feels scripted. Uh, it feels like I was picking up where I was just like, picking up an old bag that was mine the whole time. Just picking up where we left off. You know, I had never felt that before. Peter and I were, were living our lives almost parallel <clears throat> to each other without, without even knowing. Um, and I think it, was, it wasn't until um, the timing was right for both of us in our lives. Um, because I had been away from Guam for about six years. Um, he was away for the same time. And it wasn't until I think the timing in our lives were right. Um, you know, after we did what we wanted to do, after we um, went to school and, you know, followed our, you know, paths for a bit until we were ready for each other. With, with Momo, I just, you know, I didn't get an inkling of feeling like I had to be anybody else other than myself. I don't know how to explain it, but um, I, it's just everything was meshing, you know. We just deep, deep, deep rooted down deep. It, 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 it just works. But with Peter, I mean, it was like everything just like he knew, like, you know, every, like we were raised in the same area and, and with the same values. And um, I'm so thankful for that. Oh, I mean, she's, she's beautiful, she's brilliant. She's, she's, she's a wonder woman and she loves my family. My family loves her. Um, we joke that we've been together for multiple lifetimes. And so we've known each other for hundreds of years. And so, um, and, and then when we, when we met, as our relationship has gone on, we learned more and more about each other. I feel like you know, I just met my best friend, you know, two years and change ago, you know. And we, we don't want to lose a second. Um, but Peter just really, you know, he's so fun and loving and um, he has this like big, vibrant personality, right? And so I really feel like he compliments me and that he really helps to bring that side out of me. My grandma passed away recently and she would have loved Momo. Incredibly intelligent, taught herself to read and write, very resourceful. And like during chaos moments, she'll just be like, nothing, not like no nervousness and everybody will be shaking. And that type of strength and that and that that type of power. I wanted Momo to meet her because my grandma had taught me a lot. And I know she would have loved Momo. And then uh, you know, we'll, we'll go visit her grave in Seychelles, so we'll meet her. <sighs> but yeah, I wish I had met. Peter. You are my light, and you are my tochi, and from the moment I met you, I thank God for bringing you into my life. I know we say that we've known each other for lifetimes, and I really feel like it's true because you are my best friend, you are my life's partner, and I am so thankful to have you in my life. You bring such joy and laughter, and you comfort me when I'm angry, when I'm sad, when I'm hungry, when I'm overwhelmed, and you bring calm to my life. You accept me for who I am. You allow me to be the best person that I can be, and I really feel like you being next to me gives me strength so that I can build and I love you so much and I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I love you. I'm the luckiest man in the world. I feel like we've done this many, many times before with each other and this is just another milestone that we've done 
and we will have many more. I love you more and more every day. And you're going to look so beautiful, as always. And I am so, so excited to marry you. I love you with all my heart. You're my OP, and I'm your rock. So let's build this life together. Love you.